What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So Democrats are actually extremely worried about what is going on right now. We are hearing more and more reports that the CBO score that is going to come out sometime this week, it's not going to be what Democrats were expecting. Well, what we are hearing is that President Biden is awaiting the CBO score, but at the same time he's warning Democrats that just understand that we do not have to go by what this score is telling us, that he is telling them that there's gonna be a lot of things that this score doesn't actually include. So I wanna break down what is happening there as well. We're also hearing there's multiple reports of a very dark Christmas, and it's actually because of Senator Joe Manchin. I want to break down what's happening there, and while I'm doing that, I will talk about the upcoming stimulus package, give you an update as to where we currently stand, because right now things are looking very interesting. Now, when I say interesting, this does not mean great. Remember what I said earlier on today and what I said yesterday is that House Democrats are planning a vote this week. That's great, that's awesome, that's just fantastic. But the problem is, just because the House votes on something does not mean that the Senate is gonna vote on it as well. It doesn't mean that whatever the House passes is what the Senate is gonna pass as well. It doesn't mean what the House of Representatives wants is what the Senators want either. So that's where things are gonna get very dicey. Here's what I can tell you though. Beginning yesterday, the White House started to warn lawmakers that the CBO score will not come back saying that the bill is going to be fully funded. And they just wanted to warn lawmakers that this is gonna happen, they expect it, and yes, it's completely fine. They're telling House Democrats that this bill doesn't actually take into consideration or, or, or actually into account that the extension of uh, you know short-term legislation, right? These are things like, Let's say the child tax credit payments, they've been extended, or they will be extended for 2022 if this bill passes, but the expectation is that lawmakers want a little bit more uh, data to come in to decide whether or not to extend this for two or three more years. So if we see the child tax credit payments get extended for an additional one, two, three years, that's going to only increase the cost of this bill, which could push us further into a deeper deficit. That's where they're saying that we need to be, uh, you know, somewhat aware that this is what the CBO score is gonna come out and tell us. They also say if dental and vision are later on included into Medicare and not just uh, hearing, then yes, it would cost more. And, they are saying that the Trump tax cuts expire, or some, expire in 2025. So they would greatly improve the deficits that we are currently seeing. So here's what I can tell you. Right now, the White House is struggling to try to find a balance, try to figure out, okay, well, we want to get all these things passed. We want to make sure all these things are funded. But if they're not, where can we cut costs or how can we get certain people on board, right? The moderates, how do we get them on board? Well, according to reports, the White House is very concerned that the CBO score is gonna show uh, that the bill is not fully funded. And they're, they're telling people that yes, it is fully funded. But, and this is something that Senator Joe Manchin brought up uh, like a month, maybe even two months ago, that even though the bill could be fully funded and the White House says it is, and he does not uh, argue with that fact, the facts that he's arguing with is, what happens when we do extend these bills? What happens then, right? It's turning into a big issue. Right now, they say that most lawmakers are worried about how the CBO reports revenue from the IRS enforcement. Officials say that the CBO doesn't know how to estimate tax revenue from wealthier uh, individuals because this is something that we have never done before. So this is something new. So they can't come out and expect they are going to be accurate 100% of the time. Republicans say that they will extend these tax cuts though. These Trump tax cuts that are supposed to expire, Republicans say we're going to extend these. That's not a problem, we will extend these. Here's the issue there. Democrats and mainly progressives have been warning uh, other Democrats that if we do not do more for the American people, the American people will not vote Democrat and Republicans will win back the House and the Senate in the midterm elections. Well, that's a year away. 
Then in 2024, if Democrats are promising all these different things and they do not deliver, the expectation is, according to multiple reports, that Republicans, or at least a different Democrat, okay? Now we always hear, oh, I'm not gonna vote for President Biden again, fine. Uh, I completely understand that. I understand the, the logic behind it. He's promised a lot of things, hasn't delivered. Well, we could see that President Biden might not be the one winning. It might be a different Democrat or people just vote Republican. Well, what happens if we see a Republican House, Senate, and a president? That's gonna be a, a boatload of issues for Democrats. So, progressives say that we have to be aware that yes, this is a possibility and we are the ones that are causing this. Democrats have to do more. So we'll see if that actually happens. One thing I can tell you is we are seeing cuts to stimulus. And this is causing a lot of issues. A lot of issues to the, the middle income earners, low income earners, right? We're seeing a lot of issues that why do we keep on cutting stimulus? Why do we keep on cutting additional funding for the lower income earners, the American people? Why do we do that, but yet we promise you know, big businesses all this money? We're sending billions of dollars to other countries. Why do we do that? Just to give you an idea of what has already been cut, affordable housing has been cut. Democrats were originally wanting, I think like $356 billion, right? It got cut down to, I think 300, then it went down to two, 250, 240, somewhere like that. Then it went down to two, and then they ultimately settled on 150. Well, actually it went down to like 100, 100 billion dollars in affordable housing funding, and then it got pushed back up to 150. So right now, affordable housing was cut by more than half. Paid family leave, this has currently been uh, reduced from 12 weeks down to four weeks, but the expectation, and uh, mainly coming from Senator Joe Manchin, is this could potentially just be 100% cut, cut from this entire bill. So if we see that, that's gonna be big cuts to stimulus as well because that was gonna go mainly to, to middle and lower income families, mostly to lower income families because that's the, those are the, the kind of jobs that do not have paid family leave at this time. Those in like retail, hospitality, uh, you know, leisure, things like that. Uh, there's also no stimulus checks. This was a big one. Many Democrats were fighting for this. At one time, we had close to 100 lawmakers, both, de uh, both uh, uh, representatives and senators, that were supportive of a fourth stimulus check. Maybe something as high as $2,000. I know we kept hearing reports $2,000 per month. I said that was never gonna happen, and you know, I was pretty much just proven right that yes, it's never gonna happen, because both uh, Republicans and Democrats couldn't get behind that. But Democrats are also, or were considering an additional round of, an, of uh, enhanced unemployment benefits. Now at this time, that's not been included either. So a lot of the different stimulus that was on the table has either been completely reduced or just simply cut. So we'll see what happens there. But the expectation right now is we have to get this bill done. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter uh, what is in the bill. And I said this earlier today, and I said this yesterday as well, the big thing that Democrats have been uh, going with is, well, it's better than nothing. And I, and I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm a little tired of hearing that. I'm a little tired of saying it as well, but that's the truth. Democrats have been coming out for months telling us it's better than nothing. That's their argument. Progressives have been using this argument as it's better than nothing for months been saying that to moderates, been saying that to, uh, you know, pretty much the Democratic leaders. Okay, we'll settle because it's better than nothing. Nancy Pelosi, for the longest time, she was on the fence about either passing a bill or just giving the American people absolutely nothing because she said nothing is the same as is very little. But the American people kept saying, no, something is better than nothing. And now we see lawmakers saying the exact same thing. Well, it's better than nothing. But is it? Because right now we're seeing a lot of these different things going to businesses, going to billionaires, uh, going to people that don't really need the additional assistance. That's causing a lot of issues. But right now, here's what I can tell you. These cuts are not final. We could potentially see even more cuts 
As of right now, Senator Joe Manchin, he doesn't even support the idea of getting this $1.75 trillion bill uh, passed before Christmas. According to uh, multiple uh, reports today, Senator Chuck Schumer said that yes, his goal is to have this bill passed before Christmas. He did not say that that the Senate would either skip out on um, recess for Thanksgiving. According to uh, Nancy Pelosi, yes, the House of Representatives could skip Thanksgiving, skip their Thanksgiving recess if they are not ready to vote. They will do this. So if the CBO comes, the CBO score comes in, they will go and vote. And if they have to, you know, pretty much hold out and stay in Washington all throughout Thanksgiving, that's something that they're going to do. But we didn't hear the same thing from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. He didn't say that. He just said this $1.75 trillion infrastructure bill will be passed before Thanksgiving or before Christmas. Just to give you an idea, that is 39 days away. 39 days away, less than 40 days away. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer thinks we're gonna get this, this infrastructure bill passed, which still has to go through the House. We still have to negotiate it. There's gonna be a voterama on this, right? A lot of fun stuff, right? 39 days away. We have to fund the government. We have to pass the NDAA, the, Not the National Defense Authorization Act, right, for our military. We need to do that. They still wanna do something for voting rights. We need to figure out the debt ceiling, right? And, and on the debt ceiling, he's saying that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is saying that he's open to a budget reconciliation. But but our other lawmakers, some say no. So right now we're gonna see what happens. But what I can tell you is we're getting close, but yet we are still very far away. There is some good news that yes, there are deadlines uh, tentatively set, but the problem is. We know what it means when any anybody sets a deadline is we're going to blow right through that. So when Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said he wants to have this bill passed by Christmas, well, I can pretty much tell you that it might we might be passing this bill. We might still be talking about this bill come January. So that's the expectation at this time. But as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all the latest news and details. Just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. If you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.